In this class, our goal is to be able to quantitatively describe systems involving chemical reactions. So a logical starting point is to define what we mean when we talk about the rate of a reaction. So the rate of a reaction tells us how fast a number of moles of some species, A, is being uh, converted into some other chemical species. So what do we mean by conversion to a, into a chemical species? So we can have different types of reactions that convert our molecule A into a different molecule. So this could be, for example, a decomposition reaction. So here, our molecule A is broken down into, uh, say, smaller products B and C. So one example of this might be if our uh, starting molecule A is this hydrocarbon uh, cumene. It could be break, broken down into products uh, B and C, which would be, in this case, benzene and propene. Conversely, we could have uh, combination type reactions where A is reacting with some other species uh, and combining to form a product. So let's say in this case, if our uh, molecule A is ethylene, it could uh, combine with uh, another reactant like hydrogen to form, say, a saturated hydrocarbon, in this case, ethane. And then finally, we could have uh, reactions that don't change the stoichiometry of our uh, starting material A, but instead change just the structural arrangement of atoms in the molecule. So these would be isomerization reactions. So an example of this would be, let's say our molecule A is now this linear hydrocarbon, normal butane. So we could transform A into a different species just by rearranging the carbon and hydrogen atoms in the molecule to form something like isobutane. Okay, so typically we define the rate of reaction, we'll denote this R of J, as the rate of formation of species J. rather than its consumption. And in general, this will have units of something like how much um, J we're making, so moles per unit volume per unit time. So in terms of uh, sign here, R of J would be a positive value if we are generating J by reaction. So this would be the case if J is a product of the reaction and R of J is going to be a negative value. So J is gonna be disappearing as the reaction proceeds. And this would be the case if say J is a reactant. Okay, so in general, um, R of J is going to be dependent on the conditions in which the reaction is taking place. So it's gonna be a function of, say, the concentration of our species J and the concentration of, of other species, other reactants and products. It's also going to be a function of temperature. And if we have a catalyst uh, present that helps facilitate this reaction, it's also going to be dependent on the presence of that catalyst. R of J is not going to be uh, dependent on the type of reactor we use. So we'll see uh, how we can we, uh, use these rate expressions in uh, reactor design uh, equations, but uh, the uh, rate of reaction itself is not going to depend on which type of reactor we're using. Okay, so we'll spend a lot of time this semester uh, trying to uh, come up with these rate expressions or rate laws uh, where we are trying to uh, relate the rate of reaction to measurable process variables, so things like concentration and temperature. And so what these rate expressions might look like, so let's just uh, look at one simple example here. So the rate of consumption of um, a species A might be uh, proportional to its concentration with this proportionality constant K, which we call the rate constant. And that rate constant might be an exponential function of the temperature that the reaction is being carried out. Okay, so we'll see uh, throughout the cl class how we can uh, develop these um, rate laws or rate expressions. Uh, so we'll see 
uh, both how we can get this uh, understanding at a molecular level how the reaction proceeds or knowing the reaction mechanism. And we'll also see how we can get these rate expressions from experimental data. Okay. So if we want to uh, quantitatively describe any system involving chemical reactions, our starting point is always going to be a uh, mole balance. So here, I'll just show a general mole balance for a sort of arbitrary uh, system. And then in subsequent videos, we will simplify that uh, general mole balance for uh, different uh, common uh, reactor cases. So we'll look at uh, three different classes of ideal reactors. Okay, so let's say we have uh, some system uh, of interest, uh, this sort of arbitrary uh, blob shown here, and we have a flow of species into it, flow of species out. Uh, there could be some accumulation of species within the system volume, and there's some reaction taking place uh, in the system volume as well. So we could write a mole balance on any species. Uh, so let's say a species J, and we'll write this first in words. So we can say that the rate of J uh, entering the system, so sort of flowing in, um, minus the rate of J leaving the system, plus the rate of generation of J by reaction is equal to the rate of accumulation of J within the system. So this is just a, a sort of general material balance on J. So we can uh, write this in, um, rather than in words and notation. So we'll call, um, the flow in Fj0, so this is the molar flow rate, uh, so moles per time of J coming into the system. And we'll call the flow out F of J. So again, that's a molar flow rate. Um, and we'll call the generation rate of J, G of J. And then again, this is going to be equal to, this summation is gonna be equal to the accumulation of J in the system, which is just the time derivative of the number of moles of J uh, in the system. Okay, so let's um, dig into this generation term just a little bit. Uh, so uh, again, the units of these different flow terms are going to be moles per time. So we just uh, discussed how the units of the rate of formation of J are moles per volume per time. So the generation rate is just gonna be um, the rate of formation times the uh, system volume. So we can write G of J as R of J times V, where V is the system volume, in the case that the system is spatially uniform. So we uh, just discussed how the rate depends on the concentration of species, on the temperature. And so uh, if these are spatially uniform within the system, then we can just uh, multiply uh, the rate of reaction uh, anywhere times the system volume to get the overall generation rate. Uh, but if these are spatially non-uniform, then we can describe G of J as the integral of R of J dV over the entire system volume. Okay, so the, for the more general case, we'll write out now the final general mole balance. So the flow rate, molar flow rate of J in minus the molar flow rate of J out plus the generation rate. So is again, just the integral of R of J dV is equal to the rate of accumulation of J within the system. Okay, so this will be our, our sort of starting point uh, for a lot of these different uh, reactor design uh, problems. And so we'll see how this um, general mole balance simplifies um, for different commonly encountered uh, types of reactors in the next video.